Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of thinking big. Many of us limit ourselves from achieving our goals and recognizing our own greatness because we give in to limiting beliefs that we ourselves created. In a sense, we get in our own way. There's a tape playing inside our head saying we aren't ready to accomplish our goals, that we need more time, that things need to be perfect to start. The truth is, this all boils down to one thing, thinking too small. When we train our minds to think big, we then begin to see the unlimited possibilities that we can accomplish. Nothing is too big or small for us to accomplish if we set our minds to it. So how do we train our minds to think big? Well, we let go of any thoughts or beliefs that create small or limited thinking. Begin today to change I can to I will, I should to I am. These little changes in the way we speak to ourselves and our internal dialogue changes our thinking to always thinking big and seeing the possibilities. As Marianne Williamson quotes, think bigger, forget limits, embrace the idea of endless possibility. It will change you. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, let's talk about one of your most memorable milestones that you had so far. I have quite a lot of them. Um, that was definitely one of them. You know, my, yeah. just the opportunity to sit with Michael and you know, just kind of amazed that he knew my name. Yeah. You know, I, you know I'm a little guy from from Kingston, Jamaica. You know, and this guy knew who I was. I think that was incredible. Next up on the show, we have the artist Shaggy, a pioneering reggae dancehall artist. Shaggy is among the top three stream reggae artists of all time on Spotify, along with Bob Marley and Sean Paul. Shaggy, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's really an honor to have you. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Much love, much love, you know? <laughs> so before we dive into your successful career, highly successful career, let's talk about when you realized you wanted to be a musician. Ah, uh, wow. Well, uh, when did I want to become a... You know, I, I, people said get into music for different reasons. I got into music simply because of women. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's honest. <laughs> You know, I was in the lunchroom at Erasmus Hall and I realized that if I spit rhymes, I got the girls, you know. <laughs> it was pretty evident at that point. I said, hmm, this is really happening. And after a while, uh, you know, you realize when I had these records, I got into clubs for free, I drink for free, and I always, you know, got the prettiest girl. So it was, on, it, it, was <laughs> it was pretty easy to make that transition. As I went on, and I think after I got to Carolina, was when I realized that I was now, uh, you know, O'Caroline was the first number one dance hall record in the British chart. So I was now uh, in in the head of uh, re and representing a whole genre. And it, it got serious at that point, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I read somewhere that you were part of the military. So that's pretty interesting. How did that shape your destiny and kind of who you have become today? It's funny enough, people think that, you know, when you go into the military, like, you know, you go into the military to learn how to fire a gun. I, I went into the military to learn how to balance my checkbook. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, an incredible amount of discipline, you know, yeah. waking up early in the morning. Just, you know, you don't get promoted unless everything is squared away. And, you know, I took that same um, attitude and discipline towards making music that when I was, was up, you know, I had to get up at early morning and be on time for all my interviews on different continents and you know uh, it's a lot easier now because a lot of people are doing and promoting music just from their devices but back mm -hmm. then we had to uh, on planes and jumping on in different countries you know so the military yeah. helped prepare me for that yeah so when you were in the military is that when you still wanted to do music or was this before that i was doing music while i was in there wow. i used to drive, drive from north from North Carolina to New York every week wow. just to record it. Old Carolina and a song called Big Up, Big Up was recorded in my uniform at INS wow. Studio. That in is insane. Manhattan. Wow. Yep. <laughs> And, you know, you've had such a successful career from having Grammy Award winning songs. And I saw that you also performed at Michael Jackson's 30th anniversary. Let's talk about one of your most memorable milestones that you had so far. I had quite a lot of them. Um, that was definitely one of them. You know, yeah. just the opportunity 
to sit with Michael and you know, just kind of amazed that he knew my name. Yeah. You know, I, you know I'm a little guy from from Kingston, Jamaica, you know, and this guy knew who I was. I think that was incredible, you know, and he knew the records on my, uh, the songs on my, my album. He was asking me where I was when I wrote them, what, you know, what was my process. That was, that was really cool to do that. You know, James Brown was another big one. You know, I toured with James Brown in Antwerp and, you know, he would come out every night on my set and watch me. Wow. And I uh, ended kicking up my door in my dressing room one day. And, Tell me, sit, sit down, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you should let them see all sides of you. You take your up. You take away your house, your car, your woman. They'll never take away your, your talent. As long as you got your talent, you're a rich man. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's good advice. <laughs> yeah, incredible pep talk, man. And, uh, you know, that, that was great, you know, because. You know, I was such a fan of James Brown, and you know he's responsible for so many artists. You know, so many artists have um, been in inspired and, and influenced by him. You know, yeah. uh, and uh, you know, Meet the Queen the other day was you know singing on wow. her birthday. Wow! Wow! Um, we were recently invited, you know, to, to sing for the Pope also. You know, so it's wow. it's yeah, and it's been quite a ride. You know, it's been a cool little journey. Yeah. What do you think the key to your success has been? Because you know what? Everyone wants to do music. Everyone wants to be successful. As you said, when you went to the army, you learned a lot of discipline. So what do you think kind of separated you from other people and why you've, your, your music has just blown up? Well, I think we, I, I realized really early along, early along um, that I was the underdog. You know, mm -hmm. I was in a, that was not a mainstream genre. I mm -hmm. understood. I had to write songs 10 times better yeah. than that first mm -hmm. night. I had to do things 10 times um, better and work 10 times harder than the average person just to even be have a seat at the table or be in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, in 1993, when we came out and, you know, I've had a string of hits, Oh Carolina, Mr. Bombastic, you know, all these songs lined up. The radio didn't play dancehall or, mm -hmm. or reggae. You know, I mean, so how do you get record companies to invest in a genre, an artist in a genre that doesn't bring numbers to the game? It's, you know, what I mean, so it, it you know, uh, I think what has kept me part of the success of that is that I there's no two shaggy songs that sound the same. Yeah. You know, and when I did Old Carolina, I don't think you're, I don't know if you remember this song called Boom Shakalak that came out from Yeah. Action. Yeah. I know right. all your songs. <laughs> right. So, so it was one was Oh Carolina was me, and then it was Boom Shakalai by by Apache Indian, and there was Tease Me Tease Me by Chakalima Suppliers, and they all had that same Oh Carolina music mm -hmm. to and vibe. And the record company wanted me to do another one because all of these records came in and went to you know Boom Shakalai was number one, uh, Tease Me Tease Me, and and Twist and Shout, you know, one was number two, one was number three. They were all top five records, mm -hmm. and. They wanted me to do more of that, and I refused. And I ended up doing a song called "Mr. Bombastic," which they were really pissed about because it sounded nothing like "Oh Carolina." Yeah. <laughs> but the at number one, you know. And I think is the fact that I've always tried to change. You know, when I did "Wasn't Me," we're in in sync and Britney Spears mode. And yeah. You, and you remember here "Wasn't Me," you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. You know, but it's infectious, and that's kind of what I've kept doing. I look outside the box. I always want to go left field. And even recently with, you know, when we did with Banana, again, it's some left field kind of vibe, you know? So yeah. that, that's what I just do. I, I got I got to be excited first before anyone else. Yeah, I 100% agree. And you know what, as you said at that time when you had come out, you know, no one really sounded like you. There weren't a lot of songs on the radio that had your kind of unique musical style. How did you develop that unique musical style? Well, you know, I'm a person with many voices because even when I do background, I would I would sing the back because I couldn't afford background singers back then. So I would I would sing each note, you know, I would play each note and to sing those notes, you know, uh, to to make the background work. So I is doing different voices, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, part of what I was doing at the time was was with, with all those voices. I wanted to come up with a unique sound, mm -hmm. and so I. Carolina and the voice that I used to sing cadences with when I was in the Marines. Oh. You know, so I don't know, but I've been told 
My CEO wears pantyhose. <laughs> in these cadences, and we yeah. did that because, you know, all of the drill instructors would talk to you like, hey, boy, come <laughs> over here, boys. Drop and give me 20. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that, and, and so I used, to, I used to mimic them and just to make everybody else laugh. Oh, I tell you, if I come in here, boy, let me, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They all funny. Very interesting. Let's talk about how you use your platform to give back. I don't know if you remember this, but I had met you years back at the Joe Carter Classic. I had interviewed you and you were very humble and that was a charity event in Toronto. And I know you have your own uh, charity, Shaggy and Friends. So let's talk about the importance of giving back for you. Well, you know, I'm from a small country, uh, you know, small island, Jamaica. And uh, we have a hospital there that's the only children's hospital in the English speaking uh, lovely um, you know uh, Princess Diana was supposed to come there and give a lot of um, attention to it and she died right before it so I kind of took it all up and mm -hmm. you know uh, we've raised you know almost three million dollars we built a cat yeah. lab you know and um, we, we can continue to work with it very closely on you know fixing whatever problems it is and uh, giving back is, is you know I got a lot from my country of Jamaica mm -hmm. it, you know I get involved as much as I can to make people uh, to, to fix it and, and promote it and promote the culture and promote it's magical when you look at a country that that has less than about three million people and and the impact that it has had on, on popular culture mm -hmm. uh, you know, from you know everything that's going on with you know, Lady Gaga and Katy Perry and Rihanna and all of these young acts that are, you know, that's all Grace Jones. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look at you look at what they call trap right now. That's King Tubby's and Dub. You mm -hmm. know, uh, a lot of it comes from the Jamaican culture that, and you've seen it now in popular music. Mm -hmm. and, I celebrate my country every time, every chance that I get, you know, and it's just something, you know, I, you know, I did a record with Sting from the police and, you know, he sat down and he wrote every breath you take, everything she does is magic, King of Pain and all of these songs. And he did them at Golden Eye in, in the Rock of Essa. Mm -hmm. It is Shaggy, there's something magical about this, about this place, you know, mm -hmm. there's something magical that, that works. And, uh, you know, Chris Blackwell built a whole company that hosts such artists as you too, you know, mm -hmm. uh, out, of, out of Jamaica, you know. Yeah. So, it, it, it's a lot to be celebrated, and and I'm and and I'm, it is a big part of it, you know, to support the culture. And so giving back is a big part of it, and you know, doing everything to nurture young minds and young talents, and you know, uh, create opportunities is something that I'm big on. Yeah. You know, I really want to go to Jamaica. It's one of the places I haven't been. And we had Sean Paul on our show a couple weeks ago, and he was saying, also, he was just saying such great things about Jamaica. So I need to go there. Now, I, after <laughs> you're saying it's so great too, I, I'm, I'm definitely, after this pandemic is done, I will definitely visit. But talking Please. about the Caribbean vibe, and you mentioned Rihanna. I did see that Rihanna's reps had approached you about um, doing a song on her ninth album, and you turned it down. So, so why did you turn it down? <laughs> No, I didn't turn it down. I didn't turn okay. it down. That's what was reported that I Oh, okay, down. okay. <laughs> and this whole crazy uh, viral madness. Yes. <laughs> it, I, was asked, I was asked to get involved, and I said, sure, let's get together. Let's see if we could schedule it with her people and my people. And obviously she's incredibly busy and I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm incredibly busy. I have a lot of things that I'm, that I'm working on at the same time. And um, so they asked if I, <clears throat> If maybe they, because of our schedule and, and uh, if they could basically send me some beats mm -hmm. and I and I just didn't feel like I wanted to, to approach it that way. I would rather be uh, in a session together and create yeah. the magic, you mm -hmm. know, that's kind of what I said. And, uh, you know, I guess the way I said it, you know, they took it uh, an, another way, you know, but as far as Omar, you know, the A&R and all these guys, you know, we, we still talk and they, these guys are really wonderful guys. Rihanna is, it's always love every time I, I, I see her. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I've, I've known her for so many years and she's the queen of the Caribbean, you know. Yeah. Obviously a massive superstar in the world. So, uh, no, nah, so it wasn't a turn down or a, or a snub of any sort. It was just, you know, 
scheduling conflicts and you know and I prefer a certain way of, of doing production. That's okay yeah and I'm sure you guys will work together in the future um, two amazing artists, so I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> Let, let's talk about your current music. Banana has become a viral sensation. Um, it has 30 million TikTok videos with the banana drop challenge. So that, that's really cool. So let's talk about your current music and your new song. It's great. We just passed a billion streams yesterday. Wow, congratulations. Thank you very much. You know, uh, big up to Conqueror, who's, uh, uh, you know, the feature, who's the artist on there. and, and, and um, you know, he's uh, an amazing uh, guy. He came to me with a great idea. You know, we took it, we ran with it, and, uh, you know, it became something really infectious and great. And I, what I loved about it is that it brought smiles to a lot of people's faces. You know, when you look at the Banana Drop Challenge, it was people that was young, old, um, black, white, you know, um, straight, everybody were getting involved. It was a family affair. And the more you could do music that reach people on a global scale like that and mm -hmm. really affect in a positive way and put smiles on their faces is, is, is you know, is a job well done in my book. 100%. And it has a nice, you know, feel-good tropical vibe. And especially with everything that's going on in the world, when you hear a song like that on the radio, it, it makes you feel good, as you said. So, yeah, thanks for putting out great music. And last but not least, you know, our show is all about inspiring the new generation, or not just the new generation, anybody. And you've been very successful. So if you can leave one piece of advice that maybe that someone gave you or a mantra you live by, what's something that, what piece of advice would you give our audience on kind of achieving success and kind of believing in yourself. Well, I, you know, I, I, I think you just hit the nail. You have to believe in you before you sell you to anybody else. You know. Yeah. Uh, in in my case, uh, if everybody could see my vision, then they'd go do it. You mm -hmm. know, so sell your vision. So if if you're selling your vision and most people aren't grasping to it, it simply means that's because you're special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because if everybody could see it, then they just go do it, you know what I mean? But if, if you've got a plan and a vision for yourself, uh, you really just got to work hard to it. I like doing things and people thinking, wow, I didn't expect that. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and that's kind of my little high that I go for. I like proving people wrong mm -hmm. in that sense. They'd be like, oh, well, you know, that can't happen. And this, da, 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 da. And then you just you know, blow them out the box, you know. Not that it would change because they'll still, you know, unfortunately in this game, sometimes people fail their way up. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think yeah, that's, that's great advice. Probably like, yeah, but you kind of screwed up a whole bunch of things. How are you running this company still? But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, just for your own uh, growth and your own, um, yeah, you, 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 just your art, and what you're doing, you know, it's good, you know, it's good to just know what you're doing and own yourself and own what it is, your ideas. And if it excites you and you get up every morning and you want to do this, you know, that's what you should do. That's where you should go. Yeah, I think that's great advice and so true. Having a passion, believing in it. And of course, as you said, prov proving people wrong because that's the best, right? When people don't believe in you or not even under, or maybe even underestimate you and then you come out on top. So I think that's very great well, advice. Yeah, and you don't have to be nasty about it. You just gotta let them know, it says, hey, you know, I was right. <laughs> <laughs> very true. <laughs> Well, thank you, Shaggy, so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. And again, congratulations on all your success. You really are an inspiration. So yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.